Welcome to Spirit Live. We thank you for watching again. Uh, we've got a great program coming for you, and uh, I believe it'll bless you, be a blessing to you and your family. Uh, tell your friends about it. We're going to be right back after this, and uh, we want to pray for every one of you. Remember, we pray for you every day. God bless you. We'll see you at the end of the program. I'd like to go to Isaiah 51, verse 11. The last uh, time we got together, we talked about human grief and how that's how extensive uh, that can be on a person's life and how that affects them. And, and I'd like to talk about something that's related to it, and that's sorrow. And uh, there's people that are having, experiencing, you know, ongoing, ongoing pain that's not, that hasn't gone away. It doesn't go away sometimes. Some things take longer to heal than other times. And for various reasons, people, people combat uh, something. You know, we know God heals. God is interested in our lives. And so I want to talk to you about human, human sorrow um, in the problems in life series that we're doing. And so he says, uh, therefore, re the redeemed of the Lord, and that's, that's you. Say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. Because Jesus said that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, you know, uh, over in Revelation, we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And that uh, Jesus Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, and the curse is threefold, spiritual death, uh, poverty, and lack, and sickness, disease, and pain. Those are all under the curse of the law. And God says we're redeemed. And uh, he says, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and shall come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and mourning shall flee away. There's a lot in that verse of scripture, a lot of, lot of prophetic uh, word for us in the future, but there are things in there that are for us right now. You know, life is complicated, and uh, we have a complex life, uh, very many uh, things going on in our lives. There's just not just one business we have. We have a lot of relationships, a lot of activities. We do, do so much, and we interact with different people in life, and so many experiences that we have uh, with different um, kinds of situations. And, and so we need the wisdom of God to find answers to real problems that we're, we're having. And so that's why we look to God's word this morning to solve our situations. The Bible is full of the wisdom of God, and God grants wisdom for those who would ask him. And so for every situation in life that we're experiencing. So the Bible gives us principles or it gives us ideas of laws, spiritual laws, that we can use to solve our, our problems. Like, say, for instance, God says, you know, if you do this, this will happen. The um, Bible tells uh, uh, in the scriptures, and Joshua says to Joshua, if you would, you know, if, if you would listen to me and meditate on my word, put my word first, you'll be successful in everything you do. Joshua chapter 1, verse, uh, verses 7 to 9 there. He told Joshua, you can be successful in everything that you do in life. And over 1985, the Lord spoke to me, and I was having a hard, hard day, hard time in the life. I was experiencing some troubles, personal um, issues as a young person. And the Lord spoke to me and uh, told me that I was uh, successful. Everything I do would be successful. And that was a word, a personal word that came to me. And he got me to read Psalm chapter 1. When I got to verse 3, the Lord said to me, everything you do, everything you touch will be successful. So I thank God for that special word that he gave, took me to Deuteronomy chapter 20, 28, verse 8, and, and verse 6, and, and uh, that everything I would touch, I would succeed in it. And so I believe that, but I just don't touch everything. I make sure I touch what God wants me to touch and uh, that I would do it. Don't do things because of selfish ambition. And so I stay within the bounds of what God wants me to do. You just can't do anything, everything that you, you would like to, but... You have to do, your motivations has to be in line with God. For instance, God was telling Brother Hagin one time, don't write a book because you just want to make money. Write it because you want to help somebody. So that's what I put into practice in my mind. I follow what my mentors do. And um, so the Bible gives us principles to live by so that we can solve issues, we can solve problems, we can solve different things, and we can prevent ourselves from being hurt if we use wisdom. And so the Bible talks about uh, uh, people who are uh, foolish uh, just run ahead in life and, and then get hurt and blame God for it. 
So we, want to, we don't want to be one of those people. So God knows all your sorrows. God knows everything about you. He knows you right now. He knows what's happening in your heart. He knows you from the time you were born, before you were born, after you are born. He knows your future better than you know yourself. And a lot of times we ask God, do this, do that. But God knows better than you. You can't, you can't tell. You know, I remember a story. You know, I was thinking about different things in my life where Brother Hagin told us. He said in 1987, I believe it was, where they were having a camp meeting. And just before camp meeting, he says, uh, I had a vision, and the Lord took me up on, the, on top of the, uh, the um, stadium where they, were, where they were. It's a, like a convention center over in Tulsa. Some of you have been there. And he says, I went up high on the, on the, on the top, and I saw all the, the crowd worshiping God. He said, I, was, I went on top of the roof, and Jesus took me up. And he said, you see my people worshiping. And he talked to him about different things about worship and uh, irreverence and worship and, and different things, fleshly worship and, and spiritual worship. And God's looking for spiritual worship, right? He's not looking for just a, you liking a new song. He wants, he wants true worshipers, people who worship from the heart and who truly get engaged with God that way. And he said, you see all these people. He said, you see the front rows and those, those are my ministers. I've called them. I anointed them. He said, many of those guys there have... Uh, done wonderful things for me and they're doing wonderful things and they asked me to do some they made plans and different things and they they're good plans there's nothing they're on they're not ungodly plans but they're not my plans and uh, they do good things you know some i think 127 says unless the lord builds the house they that labor labor in vain sometimes you could do things in life that that are not against god they're not anti-christ they're just things that you do out of, out of your personal ambition that you want God to bless, but God only can bless it so far. And he said, these ministers are praying and asking me to bless their ministry and bless their work. He said, but I only can do so much for them because it's not in my will for them to do certain things. And so I only can bless them to the degree that it is my will. And so we need to be in the, in the, in the perfect will of God. And if we want the best from God, we've got to give God our best and follow him 100%. So uh, in saying that, I want to say that God knows everything about you. Psalm 139, let's go to Psalm 139. I'm reading the New Living Translation, if you don't mind. You know, I know some translations leave out certain words because they're trying to save paper. No, I'm just kidding. They're, they're trying to uh, they, they, they express it in a different way that you don't have to use a certain word but it comes out a little bit different, and sometimes it's washed out. So be very careful when you're reading other versions because you need to go back to, you know, a good translation. Like the King James is a very good translation. But and then again, if you study the word like I have and some of us have, we know that there has been other mistranslations. King James does mistranslate words and it does, uh, you know, add some things to it. So I, I'm, I'm a study of the Bible. I understand that. And people rave about the King James. No, it's not a you know, mistake in there. No, there's mistakes in there. So, you know, we have to be very careful. You be a student of the Bible and, and understand things. And so you understand when you read something, you know something enough, you know something's not right about it. So, and plus you have the Holy Ghost, right? So Psalm 139 verse 1 says, uh, O Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. He, he knows everything about you. God knows everything about you. Isn't that wonderful? God knows everything about you. That's pretty scary if you're trying to get away with something, right? So, Lord, turn, turn your back. I want to do some things here. Uh, you know, so he, you know, people say, uh, people say, well, you don't know my sorrow. You don't know my problems. Well, God knows everything about you. I might not know it. I might not appreciate everything about it. I might not understand anything about it, but God does. So you can't expect everybody to understand every intricate part of your, your experiences. It's impossible. So we can know some things that we can appreciate. Everybody has problems. But we can never make somebody understand, right? M make you understand everything about their, their lives. And so he, he says here that God understands. He knows everything about you. And some people say, well, you don't understand my problem. So sometimes people carry their sorrows like it's a, it's a badge that they want, a ribbon they want. And they show everybody what they've been through as if they... Want a big victory, and uh, they're very unique. So you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be recognized for having a, a badge of sorrows all over your back. And uh, sorrows come from different kinds of experiences in life, as I mentioned. And uh, sometimes they're created by ourselves. 
lot of quietness in that. But they are sometimes created by ourselves. So verse 2 says, you know when I sit down and stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel. Well, God knows when you go to a casino, get out of town, you go to a casino, he knows about that. <laughs> he can see you, you know. He knows everything. He knows you when you rest at home. He know, you know everything I do. Verse 16 says, You saw me before I was born, and every day of my life was recorded in your book. You know, God has a book. And, uh, you know, even some scripture says that the, even angels write different things that they see you do. They write that down, report that. <laughs> and so, um, every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. You know, it's, it's incredible to think about how vast, how, how awesome God is. He knows not just one person. He knows everybody, every little thing that you do. He knows everything. It's hard for us to imagine that. And, and God's love is so wonderful that you could never fully understand God's love. You know, God loves every sinner. How could that be? Well, he does. He loves every sinner. And, uh, you know, he loves you. You didn't have to do anything to get saved. Uh, you know, as far as earning your salvation. All you had to do was believe God, and he also supplied the faith to believe him. That's amazing. He said, I want you to believe me, and here's the faith to do it. That's what he does. And uh, I, I remember, and I, you know, some people always think about, you know, how, how do I know if I'm called? How do I know if I'm called? Well, you'll know if you're called. Because God will produce the knowing. Hi everyone, this is Roma Fisher again. I believe that you're enjoying the program. We want to pray with you again at the end of the program, but there's some information there on, on, on the screen that you can call or write. And we want you to know a little bit more about us and what we're doing. You know, our, our endeavor is to preach the Word of God across Canada and teach people. That's our main focus is to bring the Word of Faith across Canada. You know, the Word of God is called the Word of Faith because it brings faith to people. And people are able to believe for healing, uh, for answered prayers, uh, to believe God for anything the scriptures talk about. So hang on, we'll be right back after this. The Spirit Alive Helpline is open during Sunday broadcasts. Counselors are available to answer your calls. Call us for prayer support and encouragement. We can also assist with partner services. You can make a donation, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Let us know how the program is helping you. We would love to hear from you. Call us at 807-285-9945. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. You'll know if you're called. Because God will produce the knowing. He'll produce the faith to know. Like for myself, I can just speak for myself on this, and I understand this. It's like, you know, if you, have the, if you ever had the gifts of the Spirit operating in your life, if you had gifts of healing and, and uh, something prophetic word going on, you know something from the Spirit. And uh, the gift of faith, hey, for instance, to do something, the gift of faith comes on you, and you know you could do something. That's happened to me a number of times, but all of a sudden, in a moment of time, I knew I could do something. The same way God gives you the call. Same way. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there, I know I'm called. Well, how do you know? I just know. Well, God puts that in there, in your heart. And God could put something in your heart this morning. Amen? So he, the Bible says that God knows every heart. Before he laid out the Earth, the Bible says, even in Ephesians, you know, chapter 1 there, and other verses of Scripture as well, he laid out everything before you, everything before you are born, he already made provisions. God's already made provision for your healing even. And quit solving your, trying to solve your own healing. 
He's already done it. Jesus, right? The Psalm 119 says, Yes, I obey your commandments and your laws because you know everything I do. Thank God for the fact that he knows everything about you. He knows everything you're going to do, everything you will ever do. The sorrow in the morning will disappear. You'll be filled with joy and gladness. One day, you know, you might have, you've been experiencing uh, sorrow maybe for five years or ten years right now. Maybe you experience another sorrow after a sorrow, another one, another one, another one. But it will go away. It will go away. Sooner or later, it's going to go away. Like when my mom died, it was tragedy struck, and I thought I'd never live another day. But today, I don't even miss my mom. Once in a while, I do miss her. I say, oh, I wish I could call mom today. I do miss her once in a while like that, but not the, 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 the excruciating pain like I miss her, but I, I miss her like I would miss you if I didn't see you for a while. Pain does go away. And so you can be happy about it this morning, that one day you won't have it. What is the meaning of suffering? When we talk about the suffering, the word suffering itself, the Greek word is sorge, S-O-R-G-E, and it means mental and emotional suffering, mental anguish, through loss, and through disappointment. We suffer emotional pain because we've been disappointed and we had lost something. And every one of us in this, in this world, in this church, we, we've experienced something where we, we suffer emotional loss because we lost something. Say, even if you lost, lost a, 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 you know, like some, I know people who've lost animals, dogs and stuff, and they, they, they suffer for a long time because that animal was like a part of their lives. I can't wait till my puppies go to, uh, go to the rainbow. As I told them, I'll see you up there. I love my puppies. I talk to them every day. I said, one day you're going to be gone. <laughs> and I look into their eyes, and I talk to them, and they're sweet, and I kiss them, and they kiss me. But, but I know one day they don't. And I don't like always having to wipe their bums and, and feeding them. And like, why do I have to do that? I said, why is me? I leave and ask for you. <laughs> and I inherited these two dogs. But somehow they became a part of my life. And so people, when they lose animals, because they've been part of their lives, you miss them. Yeah? Through disappointment. So sores, sores are real uh, happenings, and uh, they're factual, and uh, sometimes some sorrows are imaginary. You just imagine you lost something. <laughs> so sometimes uh, imaginary because we have false expectations about different things. You know, you, build a, you try to build a life that God didn't, have, didn't want you to have, and you tried building this castle. And it fell apart, and God didn't have anything to do with it. Psalm 27 said, let me remind you, unless the Lord builds a house, they did labor, labor in vain. You know, you need to make sure if God's in it. Billy Graham says, if you're going to marry somebody, make sure they love God just like you do. Right? And if you marry somebody who doesn't love God like you do, you're asking for trouble. Right? And they, they, you'll never experience uh, a kind of marriage that you could have experienced. I've talked to people over the years. Please don't marry that person. They went ahead and married that person, and they were unhappy. And 20 years, they're still unhappy. They're still not th- doing things together. They don't go to church. They don't do anything. They took that person right out of church. And uh, that can happen. Billy Graham says, be equally yoked with somebody. Right? Be equally yoked. In other words, have the same uh, values about God, particularly, that that other person. And I've seen people who got married to someone who didn't have as much zeal about God, and they got zeal only because they loved the the, the one who had the zeal. And after they got together, that person took that other person completely away from God, away from the things of God, and they're not happy. So, you know, they cause their own situation. Sorrow sometimes occurs in people's lives because of things that will never ever take place. They think about things that's going to happen in the future, but they never, they're, they're sad and sorry because of it because they think something bad is going to happen. Um, 
so they, they're met with the mourning and lamentation, regret. So it comes, sorrow is something deep within a person on the inside. Sorrow is hidden in a heart. You can smile all you want, but you know in your heart that you're not, you, you have pain in there and you're, you're smiling through things and you've kept that to yourself. You haven't told anybody about it. Uh, yeah, in fact, you even talk, don't even talk to God too much about it. And uh, you need to talk to God about it. Right? You can see people's hurts on the out- exterior of a person, the physical part of a person. Sometimes you even see the pain on their face. Just by observing them, looking at them, you see people suffering. Maybe they're using a cane. Maybe they're in a wheelchair now. Maybe they're, they have so much going on in their lives physically, you can see it. Others have sorrow. It is well hidden what's in their heart and what's going on. When you look at them, you don't see anything. But you just see somebody that seemingly is okay. And some people say, I don't know why that guy committed suicide. And yet all that time, that person was harboring or holding on to pain and walking alone. Sometimes people can disguise it with a smile. And, they, they're, and they, they're smiling, but they're hurting. Their soul is hurting. They're in pain. It's, in, it's hidden because, you know, only God knows people's hearts. And uh, sometimes you, you don't even know your own heart unless God shows you different things. I was, I was walking through the bush here, and the Lord said to me, I heard the Lord say to me, he says, uh, and he that searches the hearts knows the, what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And that came up over and over and over. Well, who searches the hearts? Well, God does. And he knows the intentions of the Holy Spirit. And the intention of the Holy Spirit is to pray through you God's will and plan. And you don't know how to get yourself out of something, but the Holy Spirit knows if you pray, connect with him and pray in the Spirit, he will get you out of certain things. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, but because he makes intercession for the saints, for the saints. He makes intercession. Who does? The Holy Spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Then it goes on. He says in there that, uh, that uh, those that love God, the Bible says, you know, he will work out the plan, the, the plan that he has in store for you. Right? He will work out the plan. So God has a plan for every one of us to get out of sorrows. So there's two kinds of things, sorrows, we want to mention here. Paul speaks of two kinds of sorrows in his epistles to the, to the Corinthians. When we look at it, we see what he means by this. He mentions two things, godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. As for godly sorrow works repentance to salvation and not to be repented of, but sorrow of the world worketh death. So godly sorrow brings repentance to a life of a person. Some criminals, you know, they're sorry only, they're sorry only because they got caught. They'd still be doing something criminal activity, if they weren't caught. But they got caught, and now they're sorry, they're in jail. They're only sorry because they got caught, and they're punished for it. Even a little child, you know, stealing cookies, if you, they steal it, they're sorry because they got caught. And they got, maybe they got reprimanded in some way. So they're sad because they got caught. But godly sorrow, the kind of sorrow that, that the, another sorrow, godly sorrow is good because it makes a change of heart. It makes a change in a person's life when you're really, truly sorry for something and you're repentant of that, then you can change. Right? So, so sorrow, there, there's that kind of sorrow that it's, it's good sorrow. Now let's look at this. Psalm 51, verse 17. We see this a little bit more. The way to please you is to be truly sorry, deeply sorry in our hearts. This is the kind of sacrifice you won't refuse. It's not unique that we're all experiencing some kind of sorrow going on. And um, 
It exists all around us. If it's not in you, it's on somebody else. Somebody you meet today is having sorrow. When we're going through our trials, stay true to God. He's going to get you out of it. He doesn't, remember, He knows everything about you. And uh, don't fight back and don't try to fight your battles on your own. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching the program again. You know, everyone has problems in life, and uh, God's here for you. And that's why we have prayer. And I believe wherever you are today, if you're having trouble, any kind of trouble with life problems, we learn how to cope by using the Word of God and going to His Word for counsel. And so I want to pray with you today. If you're afraid of the future or afraid of something in the past coming to you, you know, the Bible says that God uh, has forgiven you and He will help you go through every situation in life. So I want to pray with you right now. Let's pray. Father, I pray for that family, that friend, that boy, girl, man, woman, that person, that elderly person in Jesus' name who's coping in life. And you said in your word that we have hope in you always. And so we put our faith in you because you're the God of all hope. You can change hopeless situations around. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray for help coming to the people right now in the name of Jesus, no matter what their situation is. You said about Abraham, who a man who did not have any hope when he was 100 years old, and yet you delivered a child to him, 100 years old, even his wife, who was barren. What a tremendous miracle, Father. The Bible says that Abraham believed God, and so we believe you for our situation. In the name of Jesus, we pray that life will be, uh, life, life situations, life, uh, whatever it is, will be restored. Homes be put back together, relationships, families be put back together and lives be put back together. Father, you said in your word that out of the rubble, out of the ashes, arise new life. Thank you, beautiful life, you said, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing right now. Thank you for health right now. Thank you for restoration right now. Thank you for brand new opportunities opening the doors for them because you said in your word, you're the God that opens doors and no one can shut it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I believe God's opened the doors for you and help us on the way. We'll see you next time again. God bless you.